Yo, Gen Nation, what is good? What is good? It's been a while. It's been three weeks. This episode has uh, this episode is supposed to air three weeks ago. Um, your your boy caught a little bit of the COVID and uh, that knocked me out for a couple weeks. I ain't gonna lie. But um, every time I try to, I'll just say every time I try to talk, like long periods of time, uh, I'd have like a coughing fit. So that delayed the podcast for sure. Um, but we back and knocked out a bunch of uh, reaction videos today. So those will be going up on the YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um. I believe you could do command YouTube in chat or command Gen. But with that being said, the Gen Multiversal Podcast is back. We are back. And um, this is episode eight. This will be the two-parter. It's a two-part event like Infinity War and Endgame. However, we, we, we're not stopping after part two but there's a lot to go over um you know a lot of stuff i missed a bunch of trailers drop you know of course when uh i couldn't really do much so i i delayed watching them did uh did some reactions to them um and we're gonna talk about them here part one which is this episode um is strictly the entertainment verse we will not be discussing gaming that will be for part two because there's plenty to talk about trust me there's plenty to talk about on the gaming side um this is strictly entertainment tv movies and uh we may even throw in music at some point but not this episode but keep keep an eye out on that But, with that being said, let's get part one of episode eight rocking and rolling. Guys, I missed you all. Um, Just real quick, you know how how we vibe. The podcast is on all platforms. If you are not watching us live, if you are not watching our YouTube, um... For the visual aspect of this podcast, you have our podcast channels uh, available to you where you can listen anywhere, um, anywhere that you can download a podcast app. That would be Spotify, Amazon, Apple, Google, Odyssey, all the big players. We got them for you. Um, just simply uh, search for GGen. You'll see our logo pop up. You'll be able to uh, follow, or sub to the channel, and um, be able to start listening disclaimer we're getting close to where we're gonna have to start um we're gonna have to start removing the older episodes to make way for the new so i want to keep that uh crystal clear to you guys everybody on who's listening on the podcast uh apps the old episodes will be disappearing. However, I will keep the first episode of the theater room and the first episode of the multiversal podcast. Those are, are you know, that's what that's where we started. That's where the channel kicked off, and uh, we'll always have that available to you. But starting with episode two and so on, we will be uh, swapping those out for all the newer episodes that are coming. And um, if you want to watch the whole Multiversal Podcast series, uh, starting with episode one, you could do that on YouTube. If you want to catch up on the theater room of past episodes that are no longer on the podcast app, you could do that on YouTube. In fact, uh, theater room starts in in the 30s episode 30s uh there's 30 some 30 plus episodes that is not even on the podcast that you can look back on youtube 
YouTube will always have our full library. So it's very important to follow our YouTube. However, if you want to continue on the podcast channel, and I greatly appreciate everybody who does that, um, you will always get the newest and the latest episode on that channels, on those channels. So we appreciate you. Just wanted to throw that out there. Don't be surprised if old episodes start falling off to make room for the new. And um, with that being said, we do have merch available. As you can see, if you are watching live and on YouTube, we have shirts for uh, Spartacris, the captain, one shot for uh, me, Scythex, and uh, shorts, masks, mugs, hoodies, phone cases. It's all available to you. Um, merch, uh, merch really supports us. It helps, you know, support the channel. Um, it helps all of us continue to do what we uh, enjoy doing, and that's bring content to everyone out there. So feel free to pick up some dope merch. You'll be supporting the channel at the same time, and uh, we truly appreciate it. Link will be in the description below. Shout out to Matt Churn for providing us with the background beat today. Um, this is called Apex. You can find Matt Churn on Spotify. The link will also be in the description. Appreciate you, homie. And uh, with that being said, this is the entertainment verse. This is why we call this the multiversal podcast. We're not just gaming. We're not just movies. We're not just TV. We'll throw in sports from time to time. We're going to throw in music from time to time. Shout out to the Rangers who play tonight going for their third win of the Eastern Conference Finals. Hopefully. <coughs> oh, we're, this is not a one-trick pony. We're doing everything and anything um, that's, you know, has entertainment value to us. So, since we have a lot to say, uh, there was a lot missed. This is part one. This is the entertainment verse. We're going to be diving into news and, um, you know, talk about you know trailers that came out and uh first up morbius now morbius didn't do great in the theaters it's scoring better it's scoring better uh in the audience but it's also getting review juiced and uh it became a meme basically on twitter uh I think it's called it's Morbin time. And uh, everybody, you know, had this thing, had this movie trending, had this meme trending. And uh, the studio, Sony, put Morbius back into theaters, back into a thousand theaters throughout, you know, the US. And it is not doing well for the second time in the theaters. I, this is going to do much better on streaming. I haven't watched it yet. Um, I have the ability to watch it now, finally. And I will be doing that soon. So once I finish watching it in a future episode, look for my, uh, you know, my um, my opinion, my review. And uh, we will be talking spoilers back because it's, once it hits streaming at this point, you know, you, uh, spoiler talk is uh the disclaimer's out the window but morbius because of a meme that's been trending is back in theaters for a second run and uh it, jared leto himself contributed to the meme he look he was reading a script and somebody walks in and says uh you know what are you what are you reading what are you looking he's like trying to cover the page and uh, finally, you see the cover, and, and it says, you know, Morbius 2. It's Morbin time. So it, it even reached, you know, Jared Leto. And um, it's, a, it's a marketing thing. They're trying to capitalize on, on what's trending. I don't hate the hustle. I don't hate that they did it. Um, it's sad that it's not doing well. Because I, I, I have high hopes for this movie. Even, even with 
how it's doing in the theaters, I want to like it because Morbius is such a cool character. So we'll see. I can't wait to watch it. But if you want to see it in the theater, it is currently out now. So shout out to everyone trending on Twitter, making things happen. Uh, real quick, Kevin Smith briefly mentioned in an interview that the trailer for Clerks 3 will be coming during Comic-Con. Um, I don't know if that will be San Diego or New York. Kevin Smith is an East Coast guy. It very well could be the New York Comic-Con in October, but, um... You never know. San Diego gets everything. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But look for if you're going to follow, you know, the San Diego Comic Con or the New York Comic Con. Um, look out because a uh, Clerks 3 trailer will be dropping around that time. Now, this caught me by surprise because it was a rumor for a while. I didn't know it was official. Um, and, uh, Beavis and Butthead is is back. Beavis and Butthead is back. The movie comes out this month, which is crazy. I didn't even know this project was happening officially. And uh, we get the trailer drop about a week ago. And as soon as I heard, you know, that as soon as I hear them laughing, it makes me laugh. It just brings me back to uh, me watching them as a child. <laughs> and uh, these two idiots are just fun. It's just fun. They were they were way before their time. It's kind of hard for them, you know, to gain ground nowadays when all their great material was in, in a time when uh, nobody really understood it. I understood it, but I'm an idiot, so I like stupid humor, hence South Park came shortly, you know, South Park is shortly after Beavis and Butthead ended, and that kind of just started the, you know, everybody started understanding that type of humor, and uh, the wild nature and ruthlessness of their um, opinions on topics. Beavis and Butthead was the pioneer. They started it all. Stupidity. Crazy shit. It, it, it started here. And I'm so excited to see this. I, I can't wait. Like I said, when I, I did a reaction to this trailer, by the way, which is on YouTube right now. So feel free to go check that out. But um, like I said, as soon as I heard them laughing it made me laugh and uh the idea of this movie is them going into space i don't know how they end up becoming uh the two the two <laughs> the two kids are they're still kids i think going into space um apparently they get sucked in the wormhole now what i'm confused about is do they think they're time traveling and they just you know end in a, end up in a different city or do they actually time travel going through this, you know, wormhole, black hole, whatever you want to call it. And there, and this is like them being extracted from when we watched them back in the day to current times. Cause you see them, you know, fiddling with a cell phone for a first time saying this TV sucks. It's just fat people. Like clearly don't, they don't know what a, you know, a, a cell phone is. So, it, it are they time traveling, or are they just too stupid enough to not realize that all this technology advanced around them, and they just don't know about it? Which is very possible, because they're idiots. But um, regardless, I, I'm super excited for Beavis and Butthead. Um, it's very nostalgic. I don't care. I'm going to watch it. It could be shit. It'll still make me laugh in, in certain parts. Just even hearing them laugh makes me laugh. So uh, I'll, I'll enjoy this movie. 
regardless of how shitty it is. Because I think that's the point, you know? Sometimes a shitty movie is just meant to be shitty. And you appreciate it for that. And um, that's Beavis and Butthead. And that's coming this month. This friggin' month. So look out for that. I can't wait. Uh, I think it's coming out Paramount Plus. Um, so it's not a theater run. It'll be uh, streamed. So look out for that. Next up. Our boy Tom Cruise. Pumping out another trailer. For Mission Impossible. Dead Reckoning. This is part one. So I'm guessing it's a two part movie. Um, just like this is a two part episode. Mission Impossible. This trailer was badass. Um, this is. It kind of. I got the feel of like this is the end, you know, like James Bond. This is the end of Daniel Craig. Uh, this has a, you know, the feel of one last mission. Are you with us or are you against us? You know. And for for it to be a two parter, it it feels grand. Like this is you know the final the final story to tell for the Mission Impossible franchise. But the trailer is dope. Tom Cruise does this thing as usual. Um, there's a scene where at the end where uh, he's driving a bike off a cliff and has a parachute on his back. I fully expect that to be Tom Cruise because he does pretty much all his stunts, as you know. That's his thing. And um, I fully expect that to be him on the motorcycle riding off the cliff with the parachute. I can't I can't wait to see this movie. I'm curious. Uh, one shot supposed to be doing not one shot. Excuse me. The captain supposed to be doing a reaction video to this trailer because he's a big Mission Impossible fan. And, and, you know, like, I, I feel like we all, to some aspect, but he's like diehard Mission Impossible, and we are expecting that video. So the captain, I'm calling you out, bud. Make that video. Get that shit on YouTube. Let's go, buddy. But um, shout out to Tom Cruise, who continues to be an, an action Hollywood superstar. Like, this dude... When you think of a Hollywood superstar, it, it, there's no one else other than Tom Cruise. Like he is, he is the top. I mean, look at Top Gun, which because I was sick, I was unable to go see it. Pissed me off. Like the the timing of this was so bad. But regardless. I will be seeing Top Gun in the theater probably this week at some point. Um, that movie is crushing. It's doing so well. It's Tom Cruise's highest grossing movie of all time. And it's only been out for like a weekend or two. Compared to every major movie Tom Cruise has ever done. Top Gun 1. Cocktails. Mission Impossible 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. <laughs> Minority, like everything. Everything Tom Cruise has ever done. Jerry Maguire. Top Gun 2. Maverick has done the most money of any Tom Cruise movie. That's incredible to me. This dude is a superstar. He is Hollywood. He just continues to pump out insane movies. And I'm so excited to see Top Gun. And with the Dead Reckoning, it looks incredible. It looks like, you know, they're in um, Europe, obviously. Small roads, small cars, weird car chases that, you know, happens with them. Very Bond-like, but 
I'm just super excited to see if this is, you know, part one of the final story to tell in Mission Impossible. I cannot wait to see what they do with it. Um, the cast is great. Hallie, uh, Haley Atwell, you know, Captain Carter, if you will, is in this movie. Um, the cast is great, so I, I can't wait to see this movie. Shout out to Tom Cruise. Keep doing your thing, play. You're, doing, you're, you're, you're crushing out there. Age is just a number for that guy, man. He's just out of control. But uh, yeah, that is Mission Impossible. And uh, up next, we have The Flash. Now, I'm going to be talking about The Flash movie, even though you're looking at Grant Gustin's CW Flash. I, I just don't want to show Ezra Miller on this channel anymore because he he's a freaking disgrace to the character. He's a disgrace to, you know, how he treats people. And just The dude's a mess. He needs help really does with that being said apparently flashpoint is testing extremely well wherever the hell they're testing this movie and i don't know how i feel about that because i want to see a really good flash movie i do i really do flash is a fantastic character so many stories to tell with it so many stories that can be reversed with Flashpoint and completely destroyed. You can reboot the whole universe with just this one movie. And this it's really what we want from this movie. Reboot the whole universe. However, it is Ezra Miller and I don't really have faith in it. But with that being said, it's testing well. So who knows? I feel like I'm at a love-hate with this because I want to see a really good Flash movie, but I don't want it to do well so we can get a new Flash, if that makes any sense. Like, I would love, like, I've been saying it forever. You already have a Flash in Grant Gustin. He is perfect. I said it, I believe, in the last episode, honestly. Grant Gustin's Netflix movie was the number one sh streamed movie. I, be I believe it was Netflix. It was the number one streamed movie. The highest, you know, Rotten Tomato score. It was a perfect Rotten Tomato score. His acting was noted to be spectacular. The kid can act, man. The dude can act. And even with the budget that the CW has, even with the writing that the CW has, even with the tone that the CW forces on, you know, shows, the Flash continues to destroy everything else on that network. And that's in part to Grant Gustin's ability to carry this show, carry this character. So I'm truly hoping that we can get in some way Ezra out, Grant in, just get Ezra out, get Grant in. And somehow, somehow you either don't mention the, the recast or the reboot. I, I, it's it's hard because they're going to Flashpoint so friggin' soon. Like, the Flashpoint should not be a day one Flash movie. Like, that is a terrible decision in itself. Because it's such a large event for the whole DC universe. It's a large event for the whole DC universe. And for this to be the first Flash movie we get is a crime in itself so for them to do flashpoint now it's kind of hard to reboot the universe and just have it be a different flash unless they do it somehow with reshoots in the movie where flashpoint happens everything happens in the movie blah 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 and then you get like 
you get a cutscene at the end of the movie where something changes and all of a sudden you see Grant Gustin in the Flash suit and we're off and running with a, a new Flash to continue on. Who knows? It, it sucks that Flashpoint is the first Flash movie because uh, I would love it. I would love to see this movie portrayed by another actor, specifically Grant, but more so not Ezra. And um, I don't know. That's all I got to say about that. We'll see what happens. But apparently the Flash is testing well, which um, is cool, I guess. Because uh, a really good Flashpoint movie would be cool to see, despite everything I just said. Um, sticking with The Flash and back to the CW show, uh, I'm two episodes behind, but where I left off was um, Killer Frost was killed off. Now, they didn't kill the actress off because uh, she still exists as far as Ka um, Caitlin goes. Who's, you know, you know, Team Flash's scientist and, uh, you know, um, doctor or whatever, medic. But um, her alter ego, who then became a whole separate person when they were able to split the personalities into two bodies, uh, Killer Frost is apparently dead. Gonzo. So that happened in the CW world. And that was that's a big hit for Team Flash, to be honest. She was a big part in stopping, you know, um, stopping, you know, the criminals in the city. Her abilities were pretty dope. And how uh, they made her use it was pretty dope. But... Sticking with the CW. Mm. Gotham Knights. I said it in my reaction, and the reaction will be up on YouTube shortly. Possibly, most likely tomorrow, to be honest, because there's just a lot going on today. The Arrowverse is not the same. The Arrowverse only exists within Lois and Superman and Lois and uh, yeah, oh, <sighs> Superman and Lois and The Flash everything else you know Legends, Batwoman I mean Batwoman flopped when they switched actresses it wasn't great to begin with but it got better and then they switched actresses because she quit and the show sucked Legends died um Everything else they're doing on the CW Stargirl is honestly entertaining. They do a good job, and uh, Luke Wilson does a great job, you know, trying to manage a, a team a team of uh, young superheroes. But the newest show to the CW Arrowverse, if if it's even a part of that, I don't even know what Arrowverse is at this point. Gotham Knights and this show and the game itself came out and said we are not uh, we are not um, we're separated from the show what we're doing in the game what they're doing in the show is two completely different things different characters a different storyline but based off the same storyline of Batman being dead Batman dies in the Gotham Knights. And uh, the team that is in this show is not what I expected. You have Batman's son, who is uh, just learned for the, I guess, they make us believe that he just learned for the first time that he is Batman. His dad is Batman. You have a couple of kids that I don't even know. Two of them are brother and sister. One is, I have no idea. And one is supposed to be, you know, the one that's wearing the green coat and the purple shirt is apparently the Joker's daughter. So you have, you know, the Batman's son and the Joker's daughter teaming together, which is strange. 
and basically they're all suspects in the murder of Batman. How how would you how would the first of all how would the police think you know a group of kids killed Batman of all people, and then somehow think Batman's son is a suspect as well because he wants Bruce's fortune. He already has it. Like I, I don't I, I it just this whole premise just is weird to me. It's not an end. Another character shows up who's like, you know, a classmate of theirs. Is apparently, you know, Batman's eyes and ears, aka the Oracle, but it's not the Oracle, apparently. It's uh, Robin, but it's not Robin. I, I don't know. Batman apparently calls her the little Robin. But she had no Robin outfit on. It was just some, you know, weird, basic superhero 101 suit. Weird goggles, you know, kind of armorish looking attire, but not really. And it was a Robin reference, but I don't think she, I, I, I really don't think she's considered Robin. And the show doesn't seem to have, at least yet, Robin, Nightwing, Red Hood, you know, Batwoman, Batgirl, whatever. So, all all the Batman sidekicks are really not involved, other than this random character. So I don't really know what to expect from the show, to be honest. And with CW controlling it at this point, there's so far, you know... They're so far away from what the Arrowverse was. Who knows what the show is going to be at this point. Um, I'm more excited for the video game. To be able to play those characters that I mentioned. To really dive into the Court of Owls. Which I don't think this show is going to do. We'll see. It would be interesting to see the Court of Owls in live action. But I would hate to see it a CW show that makes sense give me that give me that in the movies like Robert Pattinson's Batman 2 Court of Owls give me that don't don't show it to me in a CW show first please don't but that is Gotham Knights the reaction will be on YouTube for the trailer look for that <coughs> excuse me um Next up, Generation. We gotta talk about the Halo finale. I didn't. I was not able to jump in the theater room and talk about it, so I want to talk about it here, briefly. Um, I absolutely loved the finale for Halo. I'm not gonna lie, I loved it. Some people were like, eh, but for me, you had no Quan Ha or Quaha, or whatever her name is. I'll never get it right, because I really don't care. It was strictly the Spartans. And they finally got, you know, a big battle on the Covenant planet, wherever they were. Um, Spartans did their thing. You had, you know, you saw them using the Needler finally. Like the Spartans grabbing a needler and using it. Um, Master Chief doing his thing. Cartana completely helping him at this point. He's no longer fighting. He's accepting Cortana. And uh, interesting enough, Cortana takes full control of his body. Full control of his mind. And season two is going to be interesting because we're going to have to deal with Cortana as Master Chief until we get John's conscience back. But when she took over, it was just like dead stare. Well, you know, 
she's in control everything's about the mission no feelings attached like let's do this you know and it, as john said it was the only way as dr strange said this is the only way i had to give up i had to give up the stone to give us a chance master chief had to give up himself to give them a chance with Cortana controlling but that big that that battle scene was cool we got the first person action again we got the all the halo sounds we love um it, it was uh, it was a fun episode it was a cool finale um it looked like the blessed one died somehow uh, she, she got betrayed you know by the covenant and ended up dying but overall man solid episode really solid episode it looks like they have the final coordinates of where the halo is and uh they can actually go go there so season two season two might be pretty crazy i'm i'm happy we didn't get um whatever face is called Quaha or something but at the same time it shows how unimportant her character was to not be in the finale you know what i'm saying like her character was not important enough to be in the finale so why did we get so many scenes and a, all basically a full episode of her character for her to not be important enough to be in the finale like such a waste she was the cole of mortal kombat she's you know like cole of mortal kombat she's she's that of halo it was so useless despite the good action sequence in my in madrigal where uh 066 is helping her you know defeat that you know uh i forget the name of the group that was in like an episode or two before the finale but the finale itself like i said i thoroughly enjoyed it um the show wasn't great obviously the fact that they refused to have Master Chief's helmet on. They refuse to show us Master Chief battles until, you know, briefly in the beginning, a little bit in the middle, and then, you know, the final battles with the Covenant. Well, other than that, it was very much John's show, not Master Chief's show. It was very much Quan, Quan's show. Not Master Chief show. The Halsey thing is very interesting. I'm very curious. How many clones she has. Very interesting to me. Um, and where the UNSC goes from here. So season two. Season two can potentially be pretty dope. Based off of what they left us on season one. Because there's a lot of things going on. But um, I believe season two is already greenlit. It, this show did very well for Paramount. And uh, I, I overall enjoyed the series. Despite you know some of the flaws and s some of the bad characters. <laughs> but um, for the most part, I did enjoy the show it was very interesting as far as the unsc and um all that stuff going on with halsey and, you know commander keys and all that stuff so season two hopefully uh comes sooner rather than later we can continue on with master chief led by uh cortana let me know what you thought of the finale in the show altogether in the comments please do we're going to switch it up and go into a Star Wars mode now. Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi dropped. And it dropped two, two, two episodes on Friday. And then episode three on the following Wednesday.
This show is fantastic. Seeing you and uh, McGregor back as Obi Wan is just perfect. Um, he he does so well jumping back into this role. He he does so well, and seeing the Inquis Inquisitors hunting him down, how ruthless they are, how one's a rogue Inquisitor to the other Inquisitors, as she's, you know, as she's directly hunting Obi-Wan where the other Inquisitors are just hunting Jedi in general. She's doing what Vader wants, and we learn that in episode three. But with episode one, it's very much Obi-Wan keeping an eye on Luke and uh, trying to be there in case something happens. But as you see in episode two, we get Leia involved, and uh, rather than... Obi-Wan protecting Luke he has to go look for Leia and um, Leia gets kidnapped because the Reva the Inquisitor who wants Obi-Wan Kenobi the most is going after is going after Leia to pull Obi-Wan out of hiding and clearly it works. You know, Leia's adoptive, uh, adoptive parents, you know, know Obi-Wan very well and trust he's the only one to bring her back. So with, you know, some convincing, he finally goes, okay, I'll leave, you know, my post here looking after Luke. I'll go after Leia bring, and try to bring her back. And um, you see that he finds her and, you know, on some random, you know, off planet or, you know, location where it's very much, you know, uh, like an underground market, it seems. Kind of like what we got from Halo, like a like a pirate location underground. If you're looking for, you know, random things to purchase in your journey, you would find it in this spot rather than like a store somewhere, right? Um, at the end of episode two, we get a teaser of Vader's face. And that's right after, I believe, uh, Obi-Wan learns that... Because he has a... He kind of has like a mini fight chase scene with Riva and she let him she lets Obi-Wan know that Anakin is still alive he is still out there he is Lord Vader and he is looking for you and let me just say bravo to <laughs> bravo to you <laughs> He does so much acting with just his eyes. It's incredible. You can really feel what he's feeling just by his facial expressions, his eye movements. It was like, what a tremendous acting performance. Tremendous acting performance. The look of like shock that he's still alive it was incredible but <laughs> episode 3 we get Vader we, and we don't just get Vader we get Vader personally hunting Obi-Wan Vader making house calls to go after Obi-Wan. He is torturing people to draw Obi-Wan out from hiding. 
you see Vader walking down the street, force choke somebody, pull him out of a window, force choke, drop him, dead. The kid runs out, father, father. Force chokes the kid and snaps his neck. Vader was fucking brutal in this episode, and I loved every second of it. He force grabs somebody else and is just dragging her, dragging her in the road as he's walking. She's just a piece of garbage. And you finally get Obi-Wan looking face to face with Vader. And Vader is just toying with him. Saying, you know, 10 years has made you weak. You are weak now, old man. It was so damn cool. Vader was such... And shout out to James Earl Jones for stepping back into that Vader voice. It was a pleasure to listen to. This whole, this episode was so friggin' good. I'm so excited for episode four this week. But what, what a great display of the dark side. What a great display of Anakin on that revenge tip. Like, he's just straight up, I don't give a fuck. I'm murdering everyone until I find Obi-Wan. And I torture this motherfucker. Like, straight up. He forced, he forced Chooks Obi-Wan and throws him into a fire so he can feel what it's like to get burned alive basically and he's dra he's just toying with him dragging him through the fire until um until you know the friend of the guy who's pretending to be a jedi in episode two uh the friend finally shows up and you know she was the one you know leading leia and obi-wan in the in like the hidden tunnels that other jedi have used And Leia goes on her own, and she and the girl and the lady comes back to help Obi-Wan as he's getting dragged in the fire. And you just see Vader just put the fire out instantly using the dark side. And the stormtrooper goes to grab him. And, you know, she snipes him out and then ignites the fire again and puts separation between Vader and Obi-Wan and the droid comes and helps him but the shot of Vader in front of the fire was an incredible incredible piece of photography incredible piece of cinema, cinema. like I, I, what a camera shot man that was so damn cool and then they zo then, then you get the close up look of his face and it's just flames in his eyes. This is going to be an incredible three episodes. I believe we're only getting six episodes of this. So I want no, don't hold any punches at this point. We have three episodes left. Balls to the wall, Vader savageness. Obi-Wan learning how to use the force again, you know, pulling his tricks back up. Let's go. It's going to be mainly Obi-Wan, you know, fighting the Inquisitors, specifically Reva. But you know that fine, you know that finale we're getting in Obi-Wan Vader fight. That's just going to be goddamn epic. And obviously, you know, Vader lives. And Obi-Wan lives because they're, you know, this is happening between, the, you know, the prequels and the OG movie. So they're just going to have an epic battle and then go their separate ways in some fashion. And uh, Obi-Wan season two is already greenlit, so it's just going to continue. 
and I would love, I know Sparta Chris, he's such a hater of, of the Skywalkers. He's such a fake Star Wars fan. I hate it. <laughs> I'm calling you out, Chris. You can't hate the Skywalkers. I know you're bored. Of, uh, you're tired of seeing the Skywalker saga. But you can't love this Obi-Wan Kenobi show and tell me you're sick of the Skywalkers. I, if, if, if Hayden Christensen wants to do a Vader show of him just being a savage throughout the galaxy. Now, he said the word rise to power. And people are like, yeah, you know, we got three movies of that. Not really. We got three movies of him training to be a Jedi and then getting burned and the Emperor saving him. We got him. We got three movies of him slowly turning to the dark side, but that's not him rising to power. Rising to power and being the leader of the Empire or the Emperor. That's what we want to see. That's what he's talking about. Him just being a savage throughout the galaxy, forcing the Imperial ways on people. That's the show I would love to see. Give me that show any day of the week yesterday. Obi-Wan Kenobi is doing a fantastic job. Three episodes in, we got three left. Like I said, balls to the wall. Let's go. Savage Vader, Savage Kenobi. Battle the battle this shit out. Let's be done with the Leia arc, please. Drop her off. You guys escape. Drop her off. We never see Leia again. We don't always need a sidekick in these damn shows. Like, that's it with Leia. She's gone. Now, focus Kenobi and Vader and Inquisitors and uh, Qui-Gon Jinn, who's apparently still alive, is uh, Liam Neeson himself is returning to play Qui-Gon. And is apparently going to show in this in this uh, in this um series. Now, not not a lie, but like Obi Wan keeps trying to reach to him in the Force to Force Ghost him, basically, and uh, Liam Neeson is signed on the plane, so. But yeah, like I said, season two is already in pre-production. And that's coming soon. Um, you know, hopefully we get some sort of trailer or whatever, but. You know what? I forgot to watch a trailer. Then they had put out an Ahsoka trailer also. Gotta watch that after this is done. But the trailer, um, they put out an Andor trailer too. I have it in my notes and I feel like I'm supposed to do a video on it. I can't really talk about Andor, unfortunately. I was gonna do, you know, break down the Andor trailer, and I didn't even watch it. I'm not gonna watch it during the podcast because uh, YouTube copyright gets really weird with that. And um, if I try to put that on a podcast channel, then you got to deal with copyright issues on, you know, Apple, Google, Spotify. It's, it becomes a headache. So. You'll never see a reaction mid-podcast. That'll always be a separate YouTube video. Um, so I can't watch this now and kind of react to it live, unfortunately. So I will save this for episode nine and we'll talk about it. So bookmark this. Let me know in the comments. Um, 
what you thought of Andor, and uh, we'll circle back and talk about it. So, with that being said, let's uh, move on to The Boys. Now, The Boys... Oh, real quick, real quick. Sticking with Star Wars, um, Mando Season 3 is rumored to be Bo-Katan versus Mando. That's the plot. Bo-Katan trying to get the dark saber, wants to rule Mandalore and all that fun shit. That's basically the premise of season three. And uh, I guess baby Yoda will be there the whole way, perfecting his force abilities without the help of Luke Skywalker. Chris should be happy. Um, Favreau, uh, Favreau's already writing season four for Mandalorian. So the Mando train is not stopping. It is the best property for Star Wars at the moment. And um, the more, the better. Keep giving it to us, man. The Star Wars, the Star Wars TV content has been great. Despite Boba Fett being kind of lackluster, it was still a good show. It wasn't the best Boba Fett show for Boba Fett, I feel like, but it was still a good, entertaining show to watch. So, I'm I'm enjoying everything they're pumping out Star Wars wise right now. And if uh, John Favreau's leading the charge, can't go wrong to be honest. But with the boys, they just dropped three episodes Friday. Three episodes. I haven't watched any of them yet. We will be doing watch parties for all of season three on Twitch live. So, listeners, if you want to join us and watch season three along with me and whoever else joins me in the Gen, um, the G Gen crew. You must have Amazon Prime. And then you must link Amazon Prime to your Twitch account. Once you do that, you will be able to watch um you will be able to watch anything we watch live on Twitch using Amazon. We we you know, I wanted to do a bunch of watch parties and uh, we did a couple and they were fun they were fun but i still feel like people need to link their accounts to be able to do this they joined up thinking they were just going to watch a movie with us and they got hit with a roadblock the roadblock is very specific you need amazon prime and you need to link it to and most pe- let's be real most people have amazon prime nowadays you must link it to your twitch account so you can watch anything we watch on Twitch through uh, Amazon Prime watch parties. So with that being said, episode one of season three will be live on Twitch today. At some point tonight. So look out for that. And we will go at some point during the week. We will do episode two and three. And then we'll be ready for um, Sunday. We may even do two episodes on Sunday. We do episode three and then four. So look for episode two sometime during the week. Um, And then episode three and four, probably Sunday. And we'll continue every Sunday. We'll do an episode of The Boys on Twitch. So look out for that. That is out. So if you're already enjoying The Boys, let us know in the comments. But um, I can't wait to start watching the show. It's one of my favorite shows out. Next, we have She-Hulk. Now, I did a reaction to this trailer, and that will be on YouTube um, probably tomorrow as well at some point. So look out for that. But this trailer was very enjoyable. I think it's going to be a good show. Um, the acting seemed uh, very believable. It seemed... Um, very on par for Marvel. However, the CGI was god awful for her. CGI was terrible. Um, 
you know, Mark Ruffalo's Hulk was perfectly fine. And he's like, not the main character. <laughs> She's the main character and her CGI was worse than a video game. Like it was just not good. It was not good at all. However, her acting was good and um, I'm very, uh, I didn't think I'd be excited for this show, but I, I'm very excited to see where this show goes. Um, however, I will say, and I said this a bit in the reaction, um, I don't like that she's mastering, she's mastering the Hulk effect or the Hulk effect. Uh, ability whatever you want to call it she's mastering the hulk so fast where it took it took the hulk years the hulk was barely talking how how long did it take us to get to ragnarok and the hulk was saying words like a baby like he was finally learning how to talk you know he was still only coming out during rage moments and uh, increased anger. Where apparently that's what happens to her, but even though Mark Ruffalo's Hulk is helping, helping her, you know, I guess try to control it. She mastered it way too quick. Because it took him years to be able to use, you know, it took him all the way to Endgame. Which was, if you pay attention, Endgame is five years ahead of where we were currently. We did a five-year jump, so we're five years ahead. The MCU is five years ahead of current time. So, the time of... Infinity War and then the five year jump is when he really mastered the Hulk and being able to control it and become you know smart Hulk if this is an origin and we're going to learn how she becomes the Hulk she Hulk her being able to control it and be able to walk around freely and have a normal conversations and be a uh, a power lawyer in New York City while being the Hulk is just uh, strange to me too soon where she's not battle tested enough no struggle you know so I'm curious to see where this where this series goes because I don't really like that aspect of it um, another trailer dropped was uh, this bad boy here, um, Thor Love and Thunder, the official trailer. We are literally a month away of this movie dropping, and I cannot friggin' wait. Gore looked incredible, except for the one scene that they showed of the close-up of his face. It, very, it looked like makeup. It looked like poor makeup job. But everything else, when they incorporated the CG to his face and everything... He was so damn creepy. It was awesome. Thor looks great. And you kind of see Korg like telling the stories to the kids of whatever world they're on. Uh, the story of fat Thor becoming God bod Thor. <laughs> and it was pretty funny. But um, you see like in that battle where in the first trailer... He finally sees Jane as Thor rocking, you know, the hammer. In this trailer, you see Thor look at the hammer like, oh, my God. And he tries to grab it and then it goes to Jane. And then that's when he sees her. I thought that was pretty cool. Him seeing the hammer first rather than her. I think that's pretty cool. Let me also say one of the most uh, my mo my favorite moment of this trailer was Jane fighting in front of Zeus. I, I apparently 
Zeus is having a gladiator type of games where you're just fighting his minions, his fighting his beasts or whatever, just to appease the crowd, right? Jane using the hammer, throwing the hammer to her opponents and you see the hammer split into like a cluster bomb, like split, like how Mando's wrist bombs are, where they just fly out in all different directions and hit their targets. She throws the hammer and because it's all pieced together, the hammer can be split apart, hit all their targets, and then she can bring it back together. That is one of the most badass abilities she can have i friggin love that shit when i seen that and i didn't catch it the first time i caught it the second time when i watched it you'll see that in the reaction when it's on youtube uh it was incredible like that that was my favorite thing my favorite part of that trailer was the ability to throw the hammer have it split apart hit multiple targets like a cluster bomb and then come back together beautifully beautiful I love it that was perfect Gore looked great Thor looked great Jane looked great Valkyrie looked great this trailer was awesome I'm super excited for this movie this movie is gonna blow Doctor Strange out what a disappointment that movie was good movie but just a big disappointment I, I, I'm I'm excited for Thor I think this movie this movie is gonna be something special and uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Now this motherfucker, bro. <laughs> MJF. If you don't know who MJF is, let me get his full name so I can say it properly. Maxwell Jacob Friedman. He is an AEW wrestler, and his whole gimmick is just being a complete piece of shit to people. He He's the Miz of AEW if the Miz had no filter. This dude doesn't give a fuck. If you're a little kid, like, all right, so if you didn't see my reaction to the MJF Try Not To Laugh Challenge, I highly recommend you go to our YouTube and watch it because it's fucking hilarious. Hilarious. You see how savage this guy is. And and the fans love it. He's making fun of people in wheelchairs. Like, oh, look what I can do. And he stands up like. And, and the parents don't care. The kids don't care. Like. He tells a kid like. He should have been swallowed or something like it, the dude is out of his mind and the kids love it the parents love it every the fans love it i love it he's a fucking savage he's a piece of shit he's an asshole and that's the perfect he goes on an epic rant this past uh, live show and completely has a cm punk pipe bomb but in a way more epic fashion completely curses out his boss live on air to the point where they cut the mic don't let him talk anymore he throws the mic down he's cursing into the camera he's calling you know the owner like a piece of shit for not paying him basically and he's going off he's going completely off saying he's carrying the he carries the company and you're not paying me like complete pipe bomb meltdown in the middle of the ring now, as a fan, it was fucking epic to see. But the company already removed him from the roster. He's not on the website. You can't buy his merch. Tony Khan completely cut him off. Now, is this a major work? I would be completely surprised, honestly. 
you can't go on TV and full blown her and go nuts like that publicly to your boss. It's not stone cold, you know, going off on Vince McMahon. You could tell that was a work. <laughs> this is this was real. You felt it like he was completely fed up with his contract negotiating um, negotiations. So I'll be completely surprised if this was all, you know, a work. I think this was completely real. I think he's suspended at the very minimum suspended wouldn't be surprised if he's completely fired at this point and uh we see him in the wwe um how i i just hope they don't filter they don't filter him like AEW um left him pretty much unfiltered you know besides uh besides the rules of television like you can't say you know fucking shit and well you know all that bullshit like depending on if it's like a 10 o'clock show you, you might sometimes you can get away with it on tv but he pushes the limits of what you can say on television for sure and i feel like you'd be more watered down on a wwe 100 percent. and i really hope that doesn't happen but i would love to see him in the wwe though he's a, he's a great character great great character and uh it'd be fun to watch I just hope he, you know, he's himself. But yeah, what a meltdown. And uh, if you, like I said, if you haven't, go check out my reaction to that Try Not To Laugh. It's a compilation of MGF just being a complete fucking savage to people. And it's fantastic. Next up, we got some Black Adam news. Um, we are getting a full trailer on June 8th. This week, a couple days. Uh, Wednesday specifically this is June 8th so this Wednesday look out for that I'll be doing a reaction to that trailer that will be on YouTube um, 100% so look for that and uh, that is coming June 8th we're getting so much stuff so much stuff is pumping out we the entertain this is where the thing is, so like the summer is where the gaming world slows down. We get and we get some announcements, you know. We used to have E3, but now we, you know we're getting some Game Fest, and I'll get in all of that in part two. My point is, as far as games releasing in the summer, heavy games releasing in the summer, we're in a drought, summer drought. It's not a good time for gaming. Good time for news, but not for gaming. Um, as far as new stuff coming out on the flip side in the entertainment world it's the best time the summer you get everything you get all the trailers for what's to come you get all the movies all the blockbusters it, this is like we're entering go season right now for movies so i'm excited june 8th we're getting the black adam trailer it's gonna be i feel like this movie is gonna be pretty damn epic um, next, this next thing was a surprise to me. I didn't know anything about this project, but this is a show coming to Netflix and it's called the man from T Toronto. And basically the premise is the man from Toronto is a, a hitman. He's like a torture specialist. And, uh, somehow Kevin Hart is being confused as the man from Toronto. And uh, when I watched the trailer, it, it, it was a good trailer. I highly recommend you guys checking it out. I've seen it before uh, I was able to do a reaction to it. So I was like, oh, what's this? And I just watched the trailer. Um, I knew nothing about this project. And the cast is fantastic. Just in this picture alone. Like, holy crap, you know? So Kevin Hart is being confused as this torture specialist and he's being sent in to you know pull information from these people in a torture way you know like cutting fingers and whatever torture devices the toronto man is uh famous for 
the Toronto man is actually Woody Harrelson. And uh, when Woody Harrelson finally links up with Kevin Hart, it, from what I saw in the trailer, it seems like he has to kind of train Kevin Hart to play the part for some reason. It's like, you have to be, you have to continue being the Toronto man. And uh, it, it, was a, it was an entertaining trailer, seeing them work together and go back and forth and Woody Harrelson being a complete badass. So I'm super excited to see this drop on Netflix. I cannot wait for it. If you haven't seen, if you've never heard about this show, like I did, and you need to look at the trailer, I highly recommend you watch it. You, you, I think you'll all enjoy it. And uh, I can't wait for the show to drop. And that brings us to uh, our last topic, which is uh, we're going to end on a sad note. Sorry. Sorry, buddy. But, uh, you know, I missed my opportunity to do this. Ray Liotta passed away. Um, and I'll just say he was like. He was. I'm a huge mafia movie fan and he, he he was a part of some of the biggest friggin movies that came out of that era obviously his role in Goodfellas but his role in Casino was just as impressive then you had, you know, Field of Dreams and all his other projects. Ray Liotta was such a great actor. And, like, when you think of those mob movies, you're thinking of Pacino. You're thinking of Pesci. You're thinking of De Niro. You have to think of Liotta. Like, he is up there. So, I, I was blown away to see that he passed away. He was only 67. And, um... It, it sucks, man, because uh, he still had more incredible movies to make. And uh, we won't get that chance but to see it. But he left a legacy behind that is epic. Pick a Ray Liotta movie, and I guarantee you, you'll like it. He, he's, the type, he's the type of actor that he rarely put out a bad project. So he will be missed for sure. And uh, I'm just going to end it this with uh, with Ray Liotta. I'll say um, this is part one of Multiversal Podcast episode eight. If you want to see um, part two, that will be it was going to be later today. I might push it to tomorrow because um, we got a lot to talk about on the gaming side as well. And that's why I didn't want this to be a three hour, four hour long episode. So part look for part two. It may come later tonight or um, Monday, most likely Monday. So look for that. But uh, with that being said, we're going to end it with a moment of silence for our boy Ray Liotta. And uh, this is episode eight, part one. The nation. Yeah. Thank you.